In today's video, we're going to be going over apparent and actual depth. Now, before you get started, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Step by Step Science. Please support our channel. Please subscribe, click the notifications bell, leave us a nice positive comment, give us a thumbs up, and don't forget to share this video. And in addition to that, we have made a bunch of other teaching and learning materials where you can find at our Teachers Pay Teachers website. The link is in the description below. And let's get started with apparent depth. Here we have a swimming pool. You're standing in the swimming pool and you're getting ready to put your sunglasses on. As you put your sunglasses on, they slip out of your hand and fall all the way to the bottom of the pool. You're standing right above the sunglasses and looking straight down into the water. That's your eye. The sunglasses are at an actual depth, because that's the depth of the swimming pool, of 0.85 meters. But when you reach in to the water to get your sunglasses, you keep missing them. They just don't seem to be there because actually where you think they are, they aren't. They aren't really where you see them. They are not at the apparent depth. They're at the actual depth. Now, how does that work? Let me explain it to you right now. These are the sunglasses. They're sitting in the bottom of the pool. Light rays are coming into the pool from the sun striking the sunglasses, reflecting off the sunglasses, and coming back towards you. So, for example, you will have a light ray that comes off of the sunglasses. At that boundary between the air and the water, between the water and the air, they are going to be refracted. That light ray is going to be refracted because those two materials, the water, and the air have different indexes, indices of refraction. The index of refraction of water is 1.33. The index of refraction is air is 1.00. Air has a lower index of refraction than water, and that means that the light is going to be traveling faster in the air than in the water, and that light ray is going to be refracted, and it's going to be refracted away from the normal line. This dotted line is a normal line. It's drawn perpendicular to the surface where the light ray strikes the surface. And then we can see that this light ray bends away from the normal line because this index of refraction is lower than this index. This is the angle of incidence. This is the angle of refraction. In this case, the angle of refraction is greater than the angle of incidence. Now, we need another light ray to locate the apparent depth. So we have another light ray that comes up. It does the same thing. Normal line is refracted away from the normal line. Once again, this is the angle of incidence. This is the angle of refraction. The angle of refraction is greater than the angle of incidence because this index is less than this one. Okay, now your eyes see those light rays coming towards your eyes, but your eyes or your brain does not know that the light ray was bent right there at that surface. It assumes that it was traveling in a straight line and it follows that light ray back. And those two light rays meet right there and that is where your sunglasses appear to be. That is what we call D primed or the apparent depth. And you can see the apparent depth is less than the actual depth. So when you look into the water straight above and you look down, you see the sunglasses, they're not really there. That is a virtual image. You have to reach a little farther down to get your sunglasses. And we can actually calculate that difference or we can calculate the apparent depth using Snell's law. This is Snell's law, which says that N1 times the sine of the angle one, theta one, is equal to N2 times the sine of theta 2. Now, this is Snell's law. We can derive the equation for the apparent depth from Snell's law. This is the equation we use to calculate the apparent depth. D prime, which is the apparent depth, is equal to the actual depth times the ratio of the two indices of refraction, just like that. Now, I'm not going to show you the derivation for this equation. If you're really interested, let me know and I can make a video for next week. Leave me a comment in the comment section below. But you can derive this equation from this equation, and this is the equation we use to calculate the apparent depth. 
And all we got to do now is plug the values in. The apparent depth is equal to 0.85, which is the actual depth, times the ratio of those two indices of refraction, N2 divided by N1, which is 1 divided by 133. And you get that the glasses appear to be at a depth of 0.64 meters. But they're not really there. That is a virtual image. And that is how we can calculate the apparent depth. Okay, now we're going to do a couple more examples, talk about a couple more examples. This one is kind of a qualitative example. Let's just say that you have your new boat here, and you're standing in the back of the boat, and you look into the water and you see a fish. Well, where you see the fish, the fish isn't really there. It's at a deeper depth. So this is the actual fish. This is the real fish. And we're going to show you how we can find the apparent depth relative to the actual depth. Once again, the fish is in water. You're standing in air. Light rays are coming in and reflecting off the fish, and we need two light rays to locate the apparent image, the virtual image of that fish. And we're going to take one ray like that and one ray like that. And once again, when those light rays strike that surface at the normal line, those light rays are going to bend away from the normal line because Air has a lower index of refraction than water, so they bend away from the normal line. They come towards your eyes, and again, your brain does not know that those two light rays were bent right there at that boundary. It assumes they came in a straight line, and your eyes, your brain, follow those two light rays back, and they meet right there, and that is where the fish appears to be. This is the virtual image of the fish was at a depth that is less than the real depth. That D prime is the apparent depth. Okay, now we can't use, in this case, because you're not standing right above the fish, you can't use the equation that I showed you on the previous slide. It is still true that the apparent depth is less than the real depth, but you cannot use that equation. It's a little bit more complicated. But I remember when I was teaching in Montana, in the United States, a student raised his hand and said, yes, that's right, because I go catfishing with a bow and an arrow. And when we go catfishing with a bow and an arrow, we look into the water. In order to actually shoot the fish with the arrow, we have to aim below where we see the fish. When you look into the water, you see the virtual image. But the real fish is below that. So you have to aim below the fish to get the fish when you're catfishing with a bow and arrow. So if you're ever doing that, don't forget about that. Okay, now we have one more example which we're gonna do is kind of a num numerical example. Let's say now we got the fish taken care of, but then you mistakenly drop the safe off your boat. There's your boat. You drop your safe off into the water and you wanna try and find it. And you get out your giant flashlight and you shine the, the, the light into the water it's bent at that surface, and this time, because it's entering a material that has a higher index of refraction, where it's going to travel slower, it's going to be bent towards the normal line. And we want to know what is the angle of incidence that will give us the correct angle of refraction so that we can see the safe. This angle is the angle of incidence. This angle is the angle of refraction. We want to calculate this angle. Now, in order to do that, we need a little bit more information. And you need to know that the safe is at a depth of 3.5 meters below the surface of the water. And that this distance right here from where the light ray strikes that surface to the actual middle of the safe is 2.5 meters. Now, you can see we have the beginnings or the makings of a nice right triangle here because we're going to use Snell's law again. And we know three of the things in order to find the fourth. You can see we know N1. We know N2. Those are right here. We're looking for theta1, which is the angle of incidence. And we need to know what theta2 is, the angle of refraction. Now, you're not given it directly. But since you know these two sides of this triangle, the uh, adjacent side and the opposite side, and we know this is theta, the angle that we're looking for, we can use our trig functions, in this case the tangent, 
because the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. Here's the adjacent side. Here's the opposite side. This is the hypotenuse. We can now calculate the angle of refraction, and the angle of refraction in this case is 36 degrees. Okay. Now we can solve this equation for the sine of theta 1, which is the sine, not the actual angle, but the sine of the angle. We know that it's going to be n2 times the sine of theta 2, which we just calculated as 36, divided by n1, which is 1. So we can plug those values in, and we know that the sine of the angle will be equal to 1.33 times the sine of 36 degrees divided by 1. And when we do that, we're going to get a, fra a fraction. We're going to get a decimal number. The decimal number that we get is the sine of the angle. So you've got to use the arc sine key or the inverse sine key, whatever it's called, to actually get the angle theta. And when you do that, you'll find out that that angle right there is 51 degrees. Okay? So there you go. In that video, we went over an, ex an explanation of the apparent depth and why we have the apparent depth. We went over a couple of examples, one a little qualitative and this one a little quantitative, and I hope you found that helpful for your understanding of apparent depth. If you found the video helpful, don't forget, do all of the following five things. Subscribe to our channel, support our channel step by step, sign, click the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Leave us a nice positive comment, give us a thumbs up, and don't forget to share this video. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next video.